Welcome back to the award-winning Post Time. I'm Heather Vitale. The Hap Hansen Progress Pace is the signature race of Dover Downs. And for this year's edition, there was one elimination with 11 horses. And the top eight finishers made the $300,000 final to be competed on Thursday, November 30th. So, who made the final? Well, first, before we show you the action, let's check out the post positions, horses, and drivers for that field of 11 going to post in the $35,000 elim. This is a very talented group of three-year-old male pacers, and it includes number nine, Down by the Seaside, this year's matron champ, who we saw earlier on the show. They're off from the outside. There goes Beach Boogie out for the lead. Also moving out, Bloodline. Toward the inside, Geez Joe. Fear the Dragon on the outside, down to the rail, Western Joe. Then comes Normandy Beach. Along the inside, down by the seaside. Caught outside, Photo Bomber Hanover. With the rail, that's Music is Art. Then it's Santa Fe's Coach. And at the end is Max Jackpot. They went by the quarter in 26 seconds. They make their way by the stands. and. On the outside, that's Beach Boogie up to get the lead back, Beach Boogie. Back to second out, Bloodline, followed by Jeez Joe, three lengths to Fear the Dragon. Down by the seaside, come to the outside, Western Joe with the rail, two or three lengths to Normandy Beach. They race into the clubhouse turn, approaching the half, and Beach Boogie is clear. Bloodline racing in second. In third, that's Jeez Joe. On the outside, Fear the Dragon in front of Down by the Seaside. Western Joe's got the rail. Then comes Normandy Beach. Music is Art is next. Court outside the whole way, Photo Bomber Hanover. Then comes Max Jackpot and Santa Fe's coach on the outside as a trailer midway up the back stretch. There goes Fear the Dragon with a rush up on the outside to get the lead. Moving into second, Down by the Seaside. Dropping back Beach Boogie. Into third comes Jeez Joe. Trying it off the rail right there. Between horses, Bloodline into fourth, three wide Normandy Beach, 121 and four fifths coming toward the top of the stretch, down by the seaside on the outside, up to get a short lead from Fear the Dragon. That's Jeez Joe third coming to the outside. They straighten away and down by the seaside begins to move away. Down by the seaside, Fear the Dragon, Jeez Joe coming toward the wire. It'll be down by the seaside, wrapped up. Fear the Dragon, Jeez Joe and Bloodline, 150 and one. Down by the seaside started from the nine hole, and that's the second tier, but it's where he finished. That was the most important, and that was three lengths ahead of the field in 150 and one with Chris Page in the sulky. The three-year-old son of some beach somewhere scores his 13th win out of 21 starts in 2017. And by the way, he recently became a double millionaire. Finishing second was Fear the Dragon with driver David Miller. And this three-year-old pacer is a winner of $1.5 million in his lifetime. Let's join Marv Bachrod with the winning trainer of Down by the Seaside. And it's also the same guy who happens to condition the second place finisher, Fear the Dragon, as well. Congratulations, Brian Brown. You had uh, two outstanding horses in here. And the winner last week of the Matron has come back and was even more impressive. He, he was really good. I was a little worried getting out of there, but uh, they all settled. Uh, he had to come a little early. They were going awful fast to the half. Cold and windy tonight. That was a pretty good mile. But, you know, this time of year, speed doesn't mean anything. It's the money that only, only makes the difference. Uh, Seaside was great. I was actually satisfied with Dragon. I'd like to see him finish a little stronger. I need to talk to David more and get his opinion. I just wonder if he hasn't raced in over a month. Yes. You know, even though we were pretty tough training him, he got one qualifier, but uh, maybe he just needs needed the race tonight. He came first over off a of big half. I'm not disappointed in the horse. Very good. Well, thank you, Brian. And of course, Chris Page has done a sensational job for you. Uh, driving last week, uh, Chris, you had to come along the passing lane and just got up with a brilliant uh, stretch drive. This time was a little different. Yeah, I mean, uh, I was a little concerned when I seen the draw nine ho or nine hole, uh, 11 horses in the race, uh, but we were able to work out a second ever trip and the horse finished strong again. 
When you think of a, an 11 horse field like that, I'm sure you don't have too much experience going against that big a field, and there's a lot of talent. Yeah, very much so. Uh, I grew up driving in Ohio Fairs. There wasn't 11 horses, but they'd score like six on the gate with three trailers. So I was a little familiar with that, but uh, like you said, a lot of great horses, a lot of good drivers, and a lot of good trainers. Any difference this week from the way uh, uh, Down by the Seaside responded uh, last week uh, because of the way the trip was matted out, you had to come on like that. This week, you were outside. Yeah, the horse um, was just phenomenal. I mean, I, I won wrapped up. Uh, look for him to be very sharp for next week and uh, hopefully draw good. I know we're not going to be getting no nine holes. You've been behind Fear the Dragon to know he's quite a horse too, uh, even though he did have so much time off. Uh, how did you look at the race when you looked at it uh, on paper? Yeah, you know, I, I thought that was definitely the horse to beat. I qualified him his last start at Dayton, uh, and I'm just very lucky and fortunate to be able to sit behind uh, two three-year-old Colts like that. I mean, it's a chance in a lifetime. Um, you know, both of them are very nice horses, and uh, I appreciate the opportunity. Now, of course, you're looking forward uh, to next week going for $300,000. Uh, is this a horse that uh, shows each and every time that he's ready to go? Knock on wood. I mean, I've drove him like I think this is my fourth time. He's won every time for me, qualified him a few times. Uh, you know, he it, he just shows up on game day. He's, he's, just, a, he's just a true competitor and, uh, you know, flawless gated. Um, good attitude just just a good horse and uh, in so far as uh, yourself uh, when you look forward to next week are you more confident or or what yeah I don't I don't try to get uh, too confident but uh, you know the horse a horse driving a horse like that will make you confident because uh, the horse is very sharp right now Brian's done a good job conditioning the horse uh, you know I want to thank the owners for even giving me the opportunity to come out here and drive them one last word Brian Brown has a tremendous record with uh, young horses over the past few years. Does he do anything differently or does he talk to you differently about them? I mean, obviously he's doing something different than everybody else. Uh, I, I, I honestly don't know. I just know his horses look good. They're rigged up good and they're trained up and they're ready to race when they come to track. Well, we'll look forward to seeing you next week. A week from tomorrow, Thursday, November 30th, it'll be the $300,000 Hap Hansen Progress Pace Final and four Delaware Standard Bread Breeders Fund Finals. So it'll be a giant day in Delaware harness racing history.